recording today's session um, so that we can post it on our website and it's accessible to other folks who are unable to join us today. So first and foremost, before we get started, um, we've invited folks to introduce themselves um, in the chat box. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead. It's nice to have a sense of who's on the call today and uh, get a sense of um, where you're at and even what the weather's like. It sounds like there's quite a bit of sun across the province today, so let us know where you are, what it's like, and what kind of day you're having. Um, looks like Shannon from Vancouver is online too. So, if you don't mind, um, just introduce yourself in the chat panel, and we will be using that chat panel a little bit later today. Um, you'll notice just at the top of the chat panel, there's a little hand sign. We're going to be using that for one of our little polls we'll do today, and we're also going to have an official poll on today's call, so keep us po we'll keep you posted. And so, oh, it's wonderful to see Josh from Camp Carey. It's been a long time since we've talked, Josh. Great to hear your voice. So what is the purpose of CanBC Network? Um, we wanted to take a couple minutes to just talk about that first before we get into our speaker's presentation today. And one thing we know is that um, you know, the Chase Ambassador Network of BC was really created to foster connections and support between people in the system who are, who are working to drive change. Um, the purpose is really to bring people together in forums like this to sort of facilitate the spread of ideas, transformation of the healthcare system, and just provide opportunities for collaboration and networking among everyone. And so it really sparked, um, you know, the network was really inspired by all the volunteers from Change Day BC. Um, that was our successful campaign back in 2015 where we invited folks to be involved in the healthcare system. Uh, watch for more because there is another change day coming soon. Um, and then also really we were thinking that there's so many people who were very engaged and involved and had so much amazing work that they were doing. We wanted a place to be able to showcase it and continue to connect. As we have new initiatives coming down the pipe, we're going to have something called What Matters to You Day coming up this spring. We wanted a place where people who, who are really keen around this work have a chance to connect with us. So um, really the network activities are going to be coordinated by the council, but in so many ways this network belongs to all of you. Um, we want to hear from you in terms of what you'd like to see in future sessions. We'd like to make this interactive and really have this session belong to the folks who are doing change in the province. Um, um, today, as we start, I know that Manny has muted the line, so I just want to let everyone know that. Um, but we will have time for questions a little bit later today. So let me get going here. So we're going to do a bit of a show of hands. Um, so wanting to get a sense of who's on our call today, so welcome everyone. And the first thing we wanted to do was get a sense of how many of you um, on the call today were familiar or participated with the Change ABC Ambassador Calls. What we're going to invite you to do is just stick up your hand if you were involved in the Change ABC Ambassador Calls. And if you're not sure where that hand icon is, it's just at the top of the chat box, on the far left-hand side, just to the left of the check mark. So throw your hands up if you were involved in that. All right, looks like we had, you know, maybe a third of the people were involved in the Change Ambassador Network on those calls. So for those of you who are new, maybe we'll ask that question next. We'll get you to take your hands down everyone on the call who already answered the first question, and let us know how many of you are brand new to these kinds of calls, these change ambassador calls across the province. Great, we've got a few new, oh, great to see it. Nice to see the new names. Ah, I see some familiar ones out there too. Hello, Colleen Reswick from Interior Health. Um, great to see your voice or your name there. So welcome everyone. So we've got lots of new folks too. So thanks for joining us today. We really want this to be yours, um, your meeting. Last but not least, we wanted to get a sense of how many of you currently receive the Change Ambassador newsletter. So again, show of hands, how many of you are getting that newsletter into your inbox? Oh, looks like a few of you are. Oh, I got about eight. Great. Oh, most of you are getting that newsletter. For those of you who aren't getting the newsletter, maybe I could impose on you, Michelle, to pop the registration link up into the chat box and sometime during today's call. So those of you who aren't getting the newsletter, um, you can sign up. And what we're going to be using that newsletter for is channel um, communicating what comes out of these meetings, communicating a little bit around um, some of the summaries of the key learnings, links to webinars, and some of the things that are coming down the pipe from the council in terms of some of our engagement activities that we're doing. Um, so I want to hand it over now to our ambassadors for their presentations. And we're really thrilled right now to have two folks on the call today from Fraser Health. So today we have Carol Faulkner, who's um, an organizational development leader with Fraser Health and an incredible engagement radical champion. She's played a huge role in kind of bringing this system forward and actually 
igniting the fire within Fraser Health. Shelley Lynn Gardner, for anyone who hasn't met her before, is a rehab assistant and patient safety support person in the emergency department at Surrey Memorial Hospital. And she's a bundle of energy and is an absolutely passionate engagement radical. And when you hear some of the stories and learnings from Shelley, I'm confident that all of you will take away something from what she shared today. So thank you very much to both of you for joining us. Um, and I'm going to hand it over to you right now, Carol, so you can actually advance your own slides um, right on the WebEx, and we'll let you get started. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Um, do I take the green bowl? No, someone has done it for me. Excellent. So thank you. And it's my pleasure to bring to you the story of Fraser House Engagement Radical Network. I would say this work has been the most exciting, challenging, and rewarding work in my career. It really has been an experience of building the bridge as we walk on it. And today, I uh, will share with you why it started, some of what the ERAD network does, the impact we are seeing, and our learning along the way. And one of the things we all know is that if we continue to look at our world from the same lens, we're going to continue to get the same outcomes. And um, this intriguing image that you're looking at is reminding you of the need to refresh and to look at things differently. So some history here. Fraser Health first experimented with a peer-to-peer -peer network back in 2013 with the Gallup Employee Engagement Survey. And we ended up with a 67% participation rate, which was the highest in the province. And this result caught the attention of the senior executive team. And at the same time, we were faced with a, a big challenge with our engagement strategy because it asked us to increase frontline engagement. We knew we needed to do something different. So the solution was to put the call out for engagement radicals who have become known locally as ERADs. And you can see the gradual growth in the network over the last two and a half years. And we have from that a number, about 50% uh, come from acute, 25% community and residential, and about 25% from administrative staff. And overall, we hold uh, the ERADs able. We invite participation and nothing is mandated. So what is an engagement radical? Uh, it's a voluntary informal leader who works with peers and they have that naturally, natural ability to engage others when they work from their true selves. They're intentional and passionate. And I want to just um, bring your attention to this do something which comes from Lois Kelly's book, Rebels at Work, where she says, these, these people are, are inspired when they see something not working. They are truly motivated to uh, repair it, to make it better. They will come forward with solutions and ideas to move that impasse forward. And um, they want to actually make the workplace experience better. It gives them energy, meaning, and purpose. So me as a member, oops, it's not me. Yes, it is. At a bit of a sticking point here, Manny, I'm not, it's not progressing to the next slide. Can you help me, Manny? Ah, great. Okay, thanks. So here is the, um, the E-team to which I belong. It provides structured support and resources in the form of monthly check-ins, monthly newsletter, question of the month. We do quarterly face-to-face meetups, and we hold an annual large e-summit. And, oh, sorry. Having a little, ah, good, it's working again, great. So to renew conversations, we ask that the ERADs establish every opinion matters, which is a standing, uh, a, agenda item for their team meetings. And in that Every Opinion Matters, we give this question of the month. And here's an example of one. How does working with others who are invested in their work encourage you in your work? And the ERADs um, adapt that question to suit their team terrain. And they either do it, you know, have their team members in pairs, small groups, huddles, whiteboards, whatever, whatever way best, best suits their work environment. And we also invite them to work in partnership with whoever they report to. 
we provide a um, easy to do monthly tool that they adapt. Um, this is the magic wand. We have pack up your troubles. Each tool is short. It's 10, 15 minutes long. Um, and we also uh, have taken many of the tools from liberating structures. We've adapted them, which uh, come from the work of positive deviance. We do give a health warning. Um, we're not solving world hunger here. We ask the ERADs to begin by choosing an area of focus they can succeed in so that their team can see a positive impact of their efforts and that the ERADs themselves actually continue to remain confident. That's really important. And now a little bit about a couple of examples of some work that ERADs have been doing in their teams. And Shelley Lynn, who Colleen referred to, she is going to present after me the amazing work that she's been doing across the site. So here at Royal Columbian Hospital, the ICU, they quickly grew a large cohort of ERADs, over 20. They had their, have their, and they use their ERADs to successfully promote compliance to hand hygiene. Here they are celebrating with a cake their phenomenal increase because prior to that they had the lowest scores in Fraser House. At Ridge Meadows, the ERADs um, do a very happy Friday. They all put on an orange ERAD t-shirt and um, they have fun morning huddles where they toss candy for good questions asked or winning answers. And they also came up with a brilliant communication solution called a one-stop shop weekly email summary because everyone was saying, oh, I didn't see the email, I didn't get the email. And this has been fabulously successful. In the adult day program, the ERADs and their manager are working closely together on follow-up to the post survey results. And I say together they're going to change the world. And the action follow-up meetings are hosted by the ERADs. We also have ERADs collating newsletters. Uh, Tri-Cities have provided a monthly 14-page minimum radical news of great content, and they're actually having their second year anniversary this month. We also have Meaningful Mondays, Boat Rockers, Rags, and many other newsletters. Now, last year, we had um, the opportunity, great opportunity, from Acadia University, the uh, Center for Organizational Research and Development, and they did some research to the very intriguing question. So what makes ERADs different from others at Fraser Health? And they looked at their work-life experience, and this is really interesting. So the ERADs, this is um, on the left side, and the others are on the right side of your screen. Uh, and I'm going to refer to the large blue piece of the pie. Um, ERADs are more engaged than others. And if you look at the green, again, this is very interesting, both ERADs and others experience being overextended about the same. That means unable to manage their workload. Um, and if we compare the purple section, you'll see that the others are far more ineffective than e ERADs, even though they still have that burden of overload. And we also, if we look at the red section, we see that others experience more burnout, greater burnout than ERADs in, in that red section. And another finding was a significant difference between ERADs and others in the areas of involvement and community. That's those two high blue bars. The blue bars are the others. And the ERADs also scored more positive than others on energy, engagement, reward, fairness, and values. So without doubt, these are highly engaged individuals, and the study did definitely affirm our, our thinking and our experience. Um, the E-team itself regularly surveys the, e the ERADs on the, the positive influence of their role on their team, Fraser Health, and patient care. And um, you can see we're certainly trending in the right direction. And I have the hope that um, that column under that last column strongly agree is going to grow and grow. And now we have learned that we could not do this work 
without support and recognition from the executive. Our CEO, he sees that ERADs increase innovation at the point of care, and he wants this to be part of where Fraser Health, he wants the ERADs to be part of how we go into the future. The executive director at Rich Meadows, she says they've made a huge difference. It's really about living that engagement begins with me and Kathy Heritage from Surrey Memorial Hospital. She says that ERADs bring a sense of caring, teamwork, support, joy to the site, and she loves it that the ERADs demonstrate their commitment through action. In the beginning, we asked for one ERAD per team. However, <laughs> interesting, in the, in, right at the beginning, we, we learned that this is really a network that is based on relationships and shared purpose, and you need connection with others for that support, encouragement, the co-creation of ideas. And we now encourage ERADs when they join to find buddies as soon as possible and not be that lone voice out there. And now I'm going to give you about 30 seconds, and I want you to read these ERAD voices. These are testimonies we gathered from ERADs at the end of last year about uh, the impact that, uh, of their role, of uh, their thinking about that, of the impact of their role. So um, from those different voices, um, I think you can see that a, a vast range is possible within the ERAD network. And now my closing words to you are if you feel these words in this word all below here, if they describe you, then consider yourself an ERAD. These are, uh, this is a word all from the orientation of the ERADs. And um, I say I hope you now feel part of the tribe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Carol. We'd like to invite folks to offer any questions right now if they have them. You can either raise your hand or pop them in the chat box. And I noticed they already have a question coming in right now. Um, so it's from Diane, and she said, could you please comment on how this study was conducted, specifically on how the comparison data created, ERAD, non-ERAD, was, was this based on surveying? So just getting a better sense of the study and the research that's been done to date. Oh. Okay, and I'm not your best uh, voice on this, but I will certainly could follow up more. But it, uh, so ERADs were invited to come forward, and there was also a, 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 not all ERADs participated, and then there was also a call out to the whole organisation as the um, the other group of others, and they. Um, answered surveys, they wrote diaries, um, and then I don't know the process actually of what uh, Dr. Michael later did uh, to draw up the, 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 the final findings, but if you want to give me your surname, Dan, I can link you to Dale Min, who's on the E-team, who is um, the data extraordinaire person. So if you, if you give me your surname, I'll get back to you with a fuller description on that for you. That sounds brilliant, Carol. And the other thing I'm wondering, um, Diane and others on the line, and maybe I'll get you to use the hand or the, actually just the check mark if you don't mind this time. I mean, maybe there's value in having Dale Min come and join us and do a presentation in the future to share a little bit around how they've measured their level of engagement with their radicals, how they've looked at this. That might be something we could explore or even have a profile or article in the newsletter. So how about we use a check mark if you think that'd be a good presentation topic, and use the X mark if you think it'd be good in the newsletter. And um, we're also currently uh, pursuing another um, research study with Acadia um, on uh, uh, the reach and impact of, of ERAD work. And uh, that's a, a little more complicated, I, I understand, than the, the one that was done last year. But it's great that they're interested in surveying us. Thank you very much for that, Carol. And uh, Diana has kindly shared her contact yeah. information in the chat box so we can get that to you after the call today as well. We'll make sure we capture it. Um, and so, you know, is there any other questions from folks here? If not, I have a whole bunch of my own. <laughs> I'm just watching for any hands. Just raise your hand or pop your question in the chat box. The question I had for you, 
um, Carol, was really around, you've talked a lot about some of the tools that are available. You've created a number of easy tools that are really simple. They're based on some of the liberating structures. Um, are, are there opportunities um, for you to share some of those tools to a broader audience? Um, is that um, something Fraser Health would be willing to share and that we could even pop on the Change Ambassador website for others to kind of take and trial and use? Um, that's interesting, you know, they're attached to every um, monthly newsletter and the other day I thought, goodness me, I don't have a folder where I've got all the success stories, the tools and the questions of the month and I said to myself, I need to organize this. <laughs> oh, it, it, we can help with the organization. <laughs> there's, 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 you know, t uh, 24 to, well, six two and a half years, there's 30 fantastic questions, 30, there's a, um, an amazing array of material. So um, I'm go I will look at all that and follow up with you, Colleen, yes. That, or, or maybe someone even presents a tool every month, you know, that is easy to apply. It doesn't have to be me, it could be a, you know, a change ambassador. That's brilliant, and we might be able to even pop them into our monthly newsletters that are happening provincially as well to spread your great work more broadly. So thank you very much. Um, so thank you. Um, and regarding the Liberating Structures Workshop, I know they've got a whole plan for that workshop, Diane, but Fatima, maybe we could just unmute your line and you could respond to quickly what that Liberating Structures Workshop on November 30th is going to cover. It's a perfect opportunity for you to promote your upcoming session. <laughs> Hi, are, am I online right now? Yes. You're unmuted. Go ahead. Oh, great. Oh, thanks for unmuting me, uh, Manny. What a what a nice segue. Thanks, Diane, for plugging that <laughs> workshop. But um, yes, we're running um, a Liberating Structures workshop at the end of this month. Um, definitely, some of the tools that the ERAD network had, uh, or Carol has touched upon, that the ERAD network has used. Uh, so, Liberating Structures and um, the idea of engaging and inviting everyone. Um, for collective problem solving, uh, working together, um, how to engage everyone's voice from from those introverts to those extroverts and, and different ways of, of problem solving, unconventional ways. So uh, I would say that we're uh, in the suite of Liberating Structures tools. Uh, there's between 25 and 35, I think. I haven't counted them exactly. Um, we're going to touch on a, a subset of those, so between eight and ten structures that um, we're going to uh, practice together and exercise together um, during that day. So if, uh, definitely if you think that um, engagement and different ways of engaging is keen to you at the moment, then um, I would recommend checking it out. Um, they're also open source, and I'll put up the website on, uh, on the ch through the chat box now, but the idea with Liberating Structures, which I, which I love and drives me even more to spread the word is that they're completely open uh, and available for everyone to use. So the the idea of liberating structures and the I mean what this network has done it just proves that there it's one tool to spread the word out and get people um, engaged in in improvement. So um, and improvement is where our focus is that it can be with other things too. Um, they've used them with strategic planning, um, like executive groups, so different levels. So I'll put up that uh, website link and then I'll put up my email address too if you want to get in touch with me further. Great, thank you so much. If you don't mind, um, if you don't mind throwing up the link for both the registration for that as well. Um, we really didn't pay Diane for that little plug, but thank you so much, Diane, and for, for Fatima for jumping in. That's what we want these sessions to be. We want them to become conversational, where we're sharing what's happening in the system, where there's things that are of interest to people. So thanks so much for that question. And thanks very much for your presentation, Carol. Um, we uh, really I was just going to say one other little bit, Diane, and talking about um, positive deviance. Melissa Crump is a member of the E-Team, and she um, continually, uh, she has, I know, done presentations with you, with with the uh, Patient Safety Council, uh, Colleen. So that's where we we get all our um, positive deviance liberating structures sources. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Carol. We're going to hand it over now to Shelley Lynn Gardner. As I mentioned, Shelley Lynn Gardner is one of the engagement radicals who puts these principles to action. And whenever I've had a chance to hear or see Shelley Lynn, she does nothing short of inspire. <laughs> um, so I'm going to hand it over to you now, Shelley Lynn. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, Carol and I have had many conversations, and one thing that she always asks me, she's like, how do you do what you do? 
And I'm like, okay, well, let me see what I can put together. So um, I put together a few key points if you're trying to get something started and how do you become an uh, uh, ERAD and build a network within your entire site, not just in your department, but how do you make it right across your whole site. So um, obviously you need to get the, the heart, the head, and the hands all in together because, you know, more hands make less work. So we'll talk a little bit. It's, for our ERAD network, it did start way back for change day. Um, I came into change day a little bit late, and uh, we had a challenge handed down to us um, from our young lady here said that we couldn't get enough pledges. I'm like, okay, no problem, game on. So we uh, we we threw out there and we started doing a, a pledge drive, and, and Hannah came down and she was able to, uh, they baked cookies for us, and that was really the beginning of people coming together to do something great. And I was like, okay, you have people that really wanted to do something for the site to make it better. And so my first tip is own your success. You did this, exploit your success. Uh, many of us are far too humble, um, but if you did something well, share that success because when people see that you've done a good job and see that they're proud, they want a part of that and they want to feel proud about it as well. So Puppy Love Day was something that we uh, also brought to our site. Um, so I'm going to talk about determining our core values. So here on our site, we I determined that I wanted to make sure that we had three guiding principles for our e-team. And the first one was it must be engaging. People need to be engaged with it. There must be some form of educational component, and it must be relevant to clinical practice. And so long as it hit these three points, then I figured we could sell it and, and we could run it. So we did something called Puppy Love Day. We've done it three times here, and it's actually um, expanded the network. I know Abbotsford's done one, Burnaby's done one, everybody wants to do one. So we actually bring in therapy dogs, and this is a staff-only event. So we bring in um, uh, therapy dogs either from BC Pets and Friends or St. John's, and it really is for the staff to come down and get some therapy, but also learn about what therapies dog, therapy dogs do. We also had service dogs on site for one of the events and they got to learn about service dogs. But it also helped encourage people to understand the healing power of dogs and that connection. And we were able to get more doggy visitors to our patients on our site, which was pretty amazing. So our first Puppy Love Day, we had well over 250 visitors. 250 staff came down in the span of a couple hours. And you just saw the joy, well, you can see the joy on their faces, like this, this little picture, this is one of our directors down at the bottom and, and you know, bending down on the floor to, to kiss the little chihuahua was just brilliant. Um, so much joy. So we were like, wow, that was amazing. And the next weeks, they're like, can we do that every day? Can you, can you bring it again next week? So we decided we were going to do it once a year, but now there's been so much demand and people get so much joy out of it, um, we're doing it twice a year. So that's the less, next thing. Do learn, modify, repeat. Keep what works well and change what doesn't. And if it's going well, then keep doing it because obviously people are engaging with it and they're really loving it. And it has gotten a lot more um, puppy visitors to our um, our patients too, and they all absolutely love it. Um, go to the next. So the next uh, event that we had done, we did SMH joint hands for mental health. So I'm going to talk about shamelessly borrowing. You can build on the success of others, and if you see something that's going to work, borrow it, mold it, and give credit to the originator. So here's where I'm going to give some credit to the BC Patient Safety Quality Council. I was at a session there, and I was sitting at the back of the room, and I turned around, and there's this beautiful photo mosaic, and I saw a whole bunch of hands on the wall in one of the pictures. And it was this group of hands I saw in this one picture that was like, I can do something with that. And it was right around the time that Mental Health Week was coming about. And I'm like, what can I do? What can I do? And it comes back to the being brave. Mental health is something that a lot of people don't feel comfortable talking about. But we really wanted to bring it to the forefront. And we wanted to get, let people know that mental health affects everybody. And it really was um, everybody's business. It, it affects one in five people. They're going to have a mental health crisis sometime in their life. And it, it really was about all of us joining hands. So you, we got people to come and they would trace their own hand and you could see all of the hands were overlapping and they were writing messages. Some messages were so simple. One of the messages was, you are an amazing mother. And there's people that saw that and they just were like, that's exactly what I needed to hear at that moment. 
there was there was things like you know what seeking help is not is is not weakness you know that strength and then besides this we also had a resource table where we had lots of um, resources and community resources from all type of mental health facilities and I know for a fact that we were able to get help for at least two people who were experiencing a crisis or knew a family member and even if we were only able to help one person make that connection to me that was a success so sometimes you got to really be brave and stand behind what you believe in but if it feels right in your gut, go with it. So another thing that we did um, last year was the first time that we did a, a Christmas giving campaign. And we had never done anything of this size before, and this was across the entire site. And obviously when you're dealing with, you know, 5,000 plus employees and such a huge campus, um, having that central communication was so important. And we wanted to make sure that we had two people on our key uh, team that were driving the messages. So the messaging was very, very um, succinct and there was no cross confusion. And especially with this particular campaign, it was being available, being available to your team as a leader, but also being available to the people that you're asking to do things. If they have questions, get back to them right away. Like it really was an amazing thing. And we, during this campaign, we were actually able to donate 275 gifts to children who might not have gotten a Christmas present. We were able to collect 250 used, gently used handbags filled with all new items that were going to women um, at the Women's Center who um, may not have felt pretty or beautiful and they have all kinds of wonderful things inside the handbags. And then we were also able to donate 250 boxes filled with things to start over. So dishes and blankets and baby gear and all kinds of stuff. So that was all of the donations that were piled up and this was only in a four week span of time. So there's a picture right in the center. This is what one unit was able to donate. We couldn't even get it through the doorways. It was just amazing. So it's kind of funny because it goes back to the, the do, learn, modify, repeat. We are actually launching our, our Christmas campaign for this season tomorrow. Um, so then um, next two points, we did uh, gain site leadership support and build your connections. It really is, if you don't know who your leadership is and who makes those um, decisions, connect with your admin assistants. They have the key and they know who does what and they can really get you connected with the folks that can give approval. Um, they are the gatekeepers, so be nice to them, please. It'll make, uh, make things so much um, easier. And then meet as often as you need. We actually now have a meeting once a, um, once a month. We actually have a, a formal meeting. We sit down. We have minutes. We do all of that. If you need to meet more often, we are meeting over coffee just in the afternoon to touch base. Hey, what's going on? What's, what's going on in the community? Um, so that was really amazing. So this staff appreciation barbecue, we actually served 1,500 hamburgers. Um, 1,500 lunches to our staff. You can see we made some uh, hospital-themed games in the bottom corner. We had a physician flinger, so we had little beanbag effigies of doctors that were able to fling across the parking lot and put them into a little box. We had a, a game called C. diff splat, which was just water bottles and ping pong balls that you had to knock off. We had a DJ go in for the afternoon. We played um, Yardsy. It was, it really, really was amazing. And we actually had our frontline administration was the ones that were standing behind handing out tickets and serving the burgers. And people were just so impressed. They were like, that's my director. He's handing out pop. And it was just really, really cool. So it brought a lot of folks together. And all of a sudden, we were just a bunch of people who happened to serve our community, not um, not bosses and, 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 and such, so that was really amazing. Um, so seize opportunities. Opportunities come along every day, but be prepared when you see something that is in line with those core values. Be able to mobilize your, your ERADs in a very quick manner. Um, shortly after our, our um, barbecue, I was like, you know what? Our auxiliary, these ladies who generally are senior citizens, they're often totally volunteers. You know what? They don't really get much appreciation and they put up with a lot of stuff. They run the lotto booth, they run our gift shop. Let's do something for them. So we set up a, a tea in our library with lots, lots of little scones and proper tea and little sandwiches and we brought them all in. We said, you know what? This is for you. The nice little touch that we decided to do is we asked everybody um, throughout the site to donate some really beautiful teacups, all random. 
and when they walked in, they got to choose whatever teacup that they're fancy, and they actually got to take that teacup home with them. And a lot of the ladies were like, oh, this is so nice, I love this, and there was like all kinds of beautiful patterns, and it was just, they really, really appreciated the fact. And the fact that they didn't really get together that often, because often they would only work with the people on their shifts, so they really um, enjoyed it, they appreciated it, we, and it really was the, you know, giving back to the people who support us every day. So some of the insights, so these are the things that I talked about, but as a leader, every successful ERAD group really has to have one leader, and that's, that person's often kind of a lone nut that's the driving force behind whatever movement. So that person is generally creative, quite driven. They're able to take time, they have patience, but they're also a motivator. Um, they're also able to discover specialized skills that people have and be able to pull that out in order to contribute to the group. Um, but the biggest thing is it takes time and it takes patience to really build a strong network. And it's planting a garden. Sometimes you're gonna feel really alone and you wanna wonder if this is ever gonna grow roots. And I remember looking back on myself, I was probably a good year kind of being the lone nut by myself and I'm like, oh, is this ever gonna take off? But now we have such an amazing uh, team even our, we actually were able to recruit two of our directors onto our ERAD team, which is amazing. And now they're like, great, let's do it. What's, what are we doing next? Which is really, really amazing. But really be patient. And if you're sincere in your efforts, you're gonna find success. Um, the ultimate goal really for me is to get to where the ERAD network on our site is self-sufficient and perpetuating. It's kind of like having a good exit strategy so that I, if if and when I need to retire and move on, it'll just keep going because the energy and the drive is so strong. So I really like in the blue box, if you don't go after what you want, you're never gonna have it. And if you don't ask, the answer will always be no. And if you don't step forward, you're always gonna be in the same place. Um, and really that was, I asked our directors, I said, look, I need directors on our ERED uh, driving committee. I want a meeting, I want a secretary once a month on the schedule and I just threw it out there and the answer was yes. So it was, um, it, it really is stepping out of your comfort zone and that really is where all the magic happens. So uh, there's points on what makes us tick, but it's always, uh, it's always, you know, go with your gut and if you lead with your heart and your head, you're always gonna be successful. Thank you. so much, Shelley Lynn. That was truly amazing. And I think when we hear, whenever I hear you speak and hear the work you've done, um, it really has been stepping outside the comfort zone and where the magic happens. We've really seen that over and over again, Look, listening to your work. And really appreciate you coming forward today. Um, we're, we're so, uh, we're running out of time here right now, but I just wonder if we maybe have time for just one or two questions before we just wrap up today's call. We have a couple little things we want to share with you before we finish, but if anyone has any questions, please feel free to pop in the chat box or raise your hand. Um, but I just think that was just an incredible presentation, Shelley Lynn, and on behalf of everyone on the call today, you can see in the chat box, there's been nothing but glowing praise for both what your presentation and, and the stories you've shared as well as the stories shared by Carol. So. Thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna just move forward to seeing the time right now, everyone, and there isn't any questions at this time, Shelley Lynn, but I really wanna thank you for presenting, um, for sharing your learning. For those of you um, on today's call, we are recording today's call. We will share it in the upcoming newsletter. Um, that will include um, this recording as well as this amazing summary of, of Shelley Lynn's learnings as an ERAD. We will also be republishing in that newsletter as well, so watch for that. Um, just really an amazing example, an inspiring example of what can happen. Just before we wrap up today, um, we wanted to talk just a couple things about what's next for the CanBC network. For anyone on the call who is, is um, Oh, we're seeing a couple questions come in. Um, will the slide decks be available? Number one, absolutely, Diane. And maybe Jenny, since you've got a question, do you want to go ahead, Jennifer? Have you seen any difference in measures of care? Let's quickly allow time for that answer. Um, have you seen any difference in measures of care? So, Shelley Lynn, I'll hand that to you to answer. 
Um, yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest difference you see, um, the puppy day, when you see people walking down, they're kind of morose and they're like, you know, have so much on their mind. But when they're coming out, they, they're so joyous and they're so excited. And for probably in the next week and when they go see their patient, they're like, oh, my gosh, you should have seen. I saw this beautiful little puppy. Oh, do you have puppies? Oh, wow, it was amazing. And, you know, people, when they feel valued at work and when they feel like we care about them and they feel like we're giving back to the folks that make a difference, they pass that on to their, on to their um, patients. So it, it gives uh, a commonality. We're, we're just all people. So it uh, definitely, um, I have seen it and, and we've definitely seen it throughout the site that people are like, oh, yay, you're one of those ERADs. You know, I was, wanted to connect with you. So it's, you know, they take that back to their patients, absolutely. That's brilliant. And Jenny just wrote in the chat box, so true, happiness spreads. And I hope everyone's feeling like that after today's call. So in terms of spreading happiness, thanks again, Shelley Lynn. Um, uh, coming up next, for those of you who are going to be attending the forum, we're going to have a Can BC breakfast session. It's entitled it Now for Something Completely Different. And so we welcome you to come, network with others who are like-minded. We're going to do some interactive activities, a little bit of a blurb about the network and some exciting announcements around some things that are coming down the pipe through the network. Um, the other thing we've got, just our next call, our next webinar is going to be on Tuesday, February 14th. We've got Sonia Chandler from Island Health who will be joining us. So come share a little love and learning on Valentine's Day. And we'll also have an opportunity to learn more about June's What Matters to You Day campaign. We will be launching that campaign in February with resources available at the forum. And so we really look forward to um, having you learn more about that What Matters to You Day and having that campaign happen across the province. I know we're just about out of time, and so um, we wanted to invite people, uh, if you want to present at a future session, please uh, take a couple minutes and um, send us a note in the chat box or send me an email if you've got a topic you'd like to do. Um, if those of you who have a minute to stay on the line, um, I'm going to hand it over now to um, Manny, who's going to just quickly pull up uh, a poll. Um, we had a meeting this week of our Can BC planning group, and that group came up with some amazing um, suggestions for what we could cover for future webinars. And we, we put those ideas down here in a poll, and we'd like to invite you just to take a minute to um, just vote in the poll on the right-hand side of the screen. And which of these topics appeal to you? And if you want to just kind of vote, we're going to use that waiting to help decide future topics for the CanBC network. Um, so maybe while that poll, people are answering that poll, Maddie, you can bring the results up so we can all see them. And just one last thing before we wrap up today is there will be a pop-up evaluation. Uh, we'll also include it in the newsletter as a follow-up. Um, but please take a few minutes to complete the evaluation. We really do want to hear from you. For those of you who are involved in Changed ABC, you know that we really listened to that, that feedback you gave us and used it to define and refine what we offered in these workshops and, and webinars. So thank you very much to everyone for joining us. And thanks again for the amazing presentations from both Carol and Shelley Lynn. Manny, are you able to pull up the results right now? All right. Sorry, Colleen. I'm <clears throat> trying, um, and I can't hit the button. All right. So we may have some technical difficulties on our poll today, everyone, but we'll make sure we look at the results if you don't mind taking a minute to answer the poll. Um, we'll take it from there. But just wanted to thank everyone again. Brilliant presentations, both Carol and Shelley Lynn. Truly inspiring. And I don't know about everyone else, but I'm certainly leaving today's call feeling energized and excited about the possibilities of the work we can do. So thanks to everyone. If you haven't already done so, take a couple minutes to do that poll and just a reminder about that evaluation. And we'll hopefully we can pull the poll results afterwards and we'll make sure we share them at future sessions and we'll certainly use them to inform our work. So thanks very much, everyone, and have a brilliant day. Hey, Manny. Hi, sorry. I just was on mute. I couldn't show the poll results. I don't know why. Hmm. Maybe ask Robin. I know she's done a lot of them. Okay. Usually you can just kind of bring up the results to share. Can, can I you at least close? get them off so we can use them for the future at least? Okay, let's take see. them from there.
Thank you so much. Looks like we've got a few, few folks on the line. Colleen Reiswick, if you're still there, it was really nice to see your name. I've missed you. <laughs> She's muted, so I don't think she can talk back. <laughs> Is there a folder? Is there any chance you could unmute her line? She's still there. Oh, hold on one second. Oh. Okay, where is she? Oh, there. There we go. Are you there, Colleen? Oh, it looks like she's still muted to me. Yeah, I'm trying to unmute her. It's not working. No worries. It's all good. Nothing Colleen, it looks there. like we can't meet your line right now, but thank you so much for coming today. It was really wonderful to see you, and look forward to talking to you soon. Okay, close poll. I wonder if I could have shown the poll to the panelists. And you can show it once you close the poll. Ah, uh, okay, so maybe that's what we needed to do. Are you able to see the results now at least? Yeah, I can see it. Oh, you can. Okay, so can you save the results? What's got the best ranking? I'd love to know. And if there's a way we can capture the results in a screencast, we can just throw them on the screen. Okay. Um, I'm just going to save them in the okay, folder. Okay, save them, and then if we can pop them into a little report, we can share them at the next call. We were a little bit tight for time at the end anyway, so. I think um, it went well, though. I was really enjoyed those presentations. I thought they were excellent. Not a lot of people on the call, only 20. Um, so now I don't know how many, and a lot of them were council folks. Um, is there a can be would, the, um folder? Yes, there uh -huh. is. Yeah, and it's where I sent it with you. Um, so I, I sent you a link to it today because, um, well, maybe I didn't. Maybe it was something else. Uh, yeah, I'll send it to you. Hold on. There's Change the Bester Network. I'll send you a link. Hold on. We've got a webinar one. And I'll make a folder called Recordings. Is that where you save it? Yeah. Or will you save the recording with the date of this webinar? So the recording I will save with the date of the webinar. Okay, great. But I need to find out where I can put this uh, poll result. Okay, I'm going to send it to you right now. I'll send you the link to the no November date. We've got a folder for this. I'm super anal about folders, you'll probably notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it easier, though. It's good, though. Uh, okay. There we go. That's the location of everything. Oh, there we go. That's the only thing we need to save, right? The poll? Innovation. Yeah. And then if we can send the presentation, or I can do that right now. I'll send the presentation to Michelle. Um, so we can load the presentation on the WebEx. Can you... Um can you see the poll results now? Uh, let me go back over there. Yes. It's interesting, quite similar to, um, but distributed leadership is low, isn't that interesting? But I think it's the language, it's too jargony. Mm -hmm. um, the top three were the same top three, well, the top two were the same top two as the other people did. Interesting. Okay, I saved the results in there. And um, okay. is the slides in there? And then I'll put the um, recording in there. And do I just send are, that to Michelle? Slides should be in there as well. They're in that folder already. Okay. The recording, should I send that to Michelle once it's um, yes, please. converted? Yeah. Okay. With the slides. Yeah. I'm sending those to her right now. Okay. All right. My husband's trying to call me for the last Okay. While. I'll let you go then. to the doctor. I hope he's okay. Keep me posted, okay? Oh, thanks. I'm getting really nervous now. I'm sure you are. I wish I was there to give you a hug. But just, if you need to go home, just go home, okay, Manny? I know. I know you're understanding. It's just, um, you know, you're always going to be torn between work and family. I know. <laughs> I totally get it. I know. All right, you take care. I'll talk to you. Okay. Okay, keep me posted. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.